Hello. Welcome to this short tutorial on how to write client applications using the ASCOM standard. The ASCOM standard is a joy for developers and it allows any developer using Visual Studio to create a client application that will work with any astronomy hardware. To get started you need to install a few bits of toolchain first of all. On the ASCOM standards website uh, you need to download the ASCOM platform, version 6 Service Pack 1 is the current version. Once that's downloaded and installed, you also need to use the uh, Downloads ASCOM Platform Developer components and install those as well. Once you've done those things, we can move into Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, uh, we need to create a simple client application. So we'll create a new project. Um, it's going to be a Visual Basic Forms application um, and we'll just call it Test1 and say OK. Visual Studio then creates our template application. We press play and it runs and there's our simple form which does nothing. So what do we do next? Well we need to get our program to reference the ASCOM components so we can use them. So in the Solution Explorer we can right click on the project and we can add reference. Um, we then look at the big list and we scroll around until we find the ASCOM components. You'll see there's quite a few different version components in there. What I normally do is I pick all the version 6 components, I highlight them and I say OK. Visual Studio will then add them to my project. I'm using Visual Studio 2010 here um, but 2012 or 28 works just as well. Uh, if we uh, view all files here and look at the references, we can see all these references have been added in. So, what do we do? Well, the first thing is our client application needs to choose which telescope it's going to attach to. You're probably already familiar in existing client applications with the ASCOM Chooser which is a drop-down list that allows us to select which telescope we want our client application to connect to. Now ASCOM provide a number of simulators which means we can do development against a simulated telescope inside the computer and we don't actually have to attach to a real one until further down in the testing. So we'll pick the telescope simulator here, we say OK, we say OK, we open the connection and here's the telescope simulator running with SkyMap attached to it. We then can disconnect from that. So how do we do that in Visual Studio? Well if we double click on the form here just to bring up the code, the first thing we need to do is create a variable to store the telescope in. So we just need, a, we'll call it obj telescope and it's going to be an ASCOM driver access telescope. Now we need to our program will need normally need to store which telescope it's using in some kind of setting. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to get a text box which I'll pop on the window and I'll get a button to go with it. and we'll call this text box something telescope and this button over here we'll call button choose doesn't matter what you call it and we'll give ourselves a button here choose uh, just for convenience I'm going to bind this text box to an application setting Uh, we'll call it a new setting, we'll call it telescope, so user setting and we'll default value of please choose to prompt the user. So we say OK and we say OK and then when we run the application it looks like that. Excellent. Now on the choose button we need to conjure up the ASCOM chooser. So we do this
we create an instance of the chooser we tell it that the device type that we want to choose is telescope and then our telescope is going to be object choose we pass the chooser the name of the currently selected telescope if we've already got one and simply by doing this command we'll open the familiar drop down window so we run the program we click the chooser button it opens up the ASCON telescope chooser we pick our telescope we say OK and then that's now stored in our setting If we stop the program and run it again it doesn't save it excellent It's working now, good. So that is using the ASCOM chooser to have our client application select which telescope it's going to use. Now needs to do something with the telescope. So we need another button. And we'll call this one connect. double click on the button to bring up the code and on the click event we're going to set our telescope to be new ASCOM driver access telescope and we'll pass it the name of the telescope that was selected by the chooser um, and then to connect to the telescope we set the connected property to true and that will connect us to the telescope. What we'll now do is we'll just disable the button that we just clicked so that nobody clicks it again. We run that program, run the chooser, select the telescope, press connect and the telescope simulator fires up and we're now connected to the telescope. Excellent. Okay, once we're connected to the telescope what can we do? Well, we can ask for certain properties from the telescope. So if we go back to our form again, and we'll get another text box, and we'll call this text box local sidereal time, and we'll make it a read only text box. Now, we want this text box to be updated on a regular basis so we'll use a form timer so if we go back here and we select timer wherever it's gone add a timer to our form we'll set the interval at one second double click on the timer so the tick event all we want to do is our text, bo text box for LST We'll set that equal to object telescope dot sidereal time. What happens when that command is called is the man who made the telescope wrote an ASCOM driver for the telescope. And that, when we ask for the sidereal time, that driver is responsible for actually connecting to the telescope over the COM port or whatever, fetching back the sidereal time for the, um, from the telescope putting it into a format that is standard across ASCOM and then all our command does is pop it into the text box. So when we run the program we connect to the telescope and nothing happens. Why? Well we forgot to start the timer. So we'll just put another line of code in here timer1.start So we connect, it starts the timer and we can now see that the local sidereal time is being written into our field. Uh, it's in a format as a double. Um, if you want to actually get it into hours, minutes and seconds you need to do a little bit more programming but that's not relevant here. So we can do the same thing again. We'll have another text box. We'll just copy that one and we'll call this text box um, park. and 
and bring up the timer code and we can set text box park dot text equals object telescope dot park now there's a number of commands here that are we can actually call the park routine or we can select this property here at park which is a boolean property that's true if the telescope has been put into the park state so we'll run that run the program connect and we can see that the park state is false because the simulator telescope which is running down here is not currently parked we'll stop that now what if we actually want to do something as opposed to simply look at properties so we'll have another button down here and we'll call this park And on there we want a separate program park. So we can now say if the telescope it at park, then object telescope unpark. Else object telescope dot park. So it asks the telescope whether it's parked. If it is, it unparks it. If it isn't parked, then it parks it, if you follow me. So we'll run the program, connect to the telescope, and it says it's not parked. We press the button, and the telescope has now parked itself. If we look on the telescope simulator, we can see scope is parked. Press our button again, and it unparks it, and we can now see that the telescope is no longer parked, and it's tracking the sky. There are a lot of other properties available for example I may wish to if I just bring up another button if we look at object telescope uh, we can ask for the attitude whether it's at home what the azimuth is um, there are many 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 properties uh, there are a lot of can properties um, which indicate whether particular ASCOM functions have been implemented by the telescope manufacturer. For example, can slew means that you can slew the telescope to a target, i.e. it's a go-to telescope. Uh, if your telescope is not go-to, then can slew will probably return false. So, for example, there is another... There are a number of... Uh, set commands but if we have a look here we can see we've got slew to coordinates so we can slew to coordinates and it asks for two coordinates a right ascension and declination so we just put a couple of random numbers in there uh, and if we now run our program well actually let's, um, let's be a bit more clever let's put a another property box down here Let's get rid of Skype. How annoying. Anyway, uh, our new text box. So the text box will be for uh, the right ascension. So on the timer, we can set text box right ascension equals obj telescope dot right ascension. Uh, so we've got a button here that's going to slew us to coordinates. So when we start the program, that's got to be right ascension dot text. When we run the program and connect, we can currently see the right ascension is 10.2. If we press our slew button, hopefully we will see that it's now moved to a right ascension 4. You can see the right ascension 4 there. If we stop our program and perhaps let's say we want to go right ascension 5, run it again, connect, 
still at 4, press our button, telescope simulator moves us to 5. It's as simple as that. There are a great deal of commands uh, if you're connecting to a telescope. ASCOM also allows you to connect to different types of hardware. So I selected to use a telescope here, but we could connect to a camera, a observatory dome, a filter wheel, a focuser, a camera rotator, a safety monitor as well as a telescope. And each of those different types of objects have got different properties and different functions that you can call. For example, the filter wheel has a function to allow you to select a particular filter. A focuser has commands to allow you to move the focus point in and out. A dome driver will allow you to close and open the shutter on the dome. The beauty of ASCOM is you only need to write your program once and it will work with any hardware providing that the hardware manufacturer has implemented the ASCOM driver for their hardware properly. Okay, that's probably the end of that. So we've now got our basic client application and I hope that's helpful to you starting out in ASCOM client programming. Thank you very much. Good night.